Many of our clients run YouTube and display campaigns, and easily, one of the first questions we get is, well, where are our ads going to appear? And it's a good question, even if they're using placement targeting because it's not as specific as it used to be. Luckily, there's been a report that's existed for years in Google Ads. It's the Where Ads Showed Report. In it, you can review exactly where your YouTube and display ads are showing. You can review if you want your ads to appear there to exclude them from certain campaigns or ad groups, or potentially even add them to a managed placement ad group or campaign. And that's exactly what we're gonna to cover today. For this demo, I have to use an actual client account because Michelle and I don't have any active campaigns. And we need to have something running to show you this report within Google Ads. Now, as I said in the intro, the Where Ad Showed report is going to be for YouTube and display campaigns. But if you look at the symbols within the campaign column, we see that there are search options here. I'm not gonna be talking about search campaigns within this video, but I do briefly wanna mention, if you want more information about where your ad shown for search ads, one of the easiest ways to get some sort of information is looking at the segment filters. If you wanna know which devices showed your ad and the splits between them, you can check that out. You can split by particular networks. Was it on main Google search? Was it one of the search partners? Depending on your campaign settings, are you enabling display within your search campaigns? And one of the newer segments for network will be cross network. And then you can look at the top versus other, how many times your ad was shown at the top of search results pages, and this will include search partners display cross network as well. So that can help you from the search side. But we're here to talk about the where ad showed report for YouTube and display. And there are two ways you can get to this report. The easiest way is to go on the left-hand navigation and click on the Insights and Reports dropdown. There, you can see when and where ads showed. It's gonna to default to when, so it's showing us the time, but there, in this tab, where ads showed. So that's one way to find it. Another way is to find content in the same left-hand navigation. Click down on that, scroll down a little bit, and then choose Placements. You may have a view like this. This particular account is running both YouTube and display campaigns, but we don't have any managed placement ad groups right now. Clearly calling out, we don't have any placements. That would be on this screen. You see the blue link? We can see where your ads appeared. And that one takes us directly to the Where Ads Showed tab, essentially getting the same view we just saw. I'm gonna click on this column, stretch it out a little bit so we can see some of the actual placement. For clarification, this account is only using display and YouTube for remarketing. And they are some pretty targeted remarketing lists. So there are some customer lists in here, some very specific audiences that we created in GA4, as well as some custom combination audiences. If you wanna know what those are, you can check out this video here. So we're not using any really generic remarketing audiences like anyone who visited my website. That said, we initially give some leeway about where users can appear because our audiences are a little bit more targeted. That being said, we still like to check our placement reports. If I scroll down a little bit, we already see some clear areas of placements that we can exclude. Big one here is Cocomelon. That is for children. And you see on type, it's for YouTube. It's very common for a parent who's logged in on their personal device and gives it to a kid to keep them busy, keep them happy at a restaurant or something. So I need to go in and implement my kid's exclusion list. Haven't updated it in a while, but the initial list is still very valuable. If you want that list, check out this video here. Initially, we did let mobile apps come through just to see how they perform. Some converted, some don't. So I don't wanna exclude mobile apps completely at this moment. However, there are a few that are taking up a lot of spend and have provided nothing in return. So I can still hand select these placements to eventually exclude from those particular campaigns. You can see next to the placement, it's telling you the placement type. Will I exclude an entire YouTube channel, a mobile app, a particular website? While the campaign name is blurred out, it is still a YouTube campaign appearing on display network sites. If you're running a video action campaign, you have to run on the display network now too. So we have seen an increase of irrelevant placements when we're doing audience targeting with video action campaigns. It's a fairly new change, but it now gives us more work when we're running our video campaigns. So I can click on this placement, Paranoid Me, I always like to open it up in a new window to see where this particular video ad is being shown. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. So since I cannot turn display network off from my video action campaigns, I will also need to select this to exclude. I'm not gonna go through a whole list right now, but you can see you can click on each one of these placements if you don't have a feeling of what the placement is about to see if you would want your ads or your client's ads to appear on these placements. But once you have selected the placements you want to exclude, you can go on up to edit and choose to exclude it from the ad group, 
or the entire campaign. I have chosen the campaign level. You can see three placements have been excluded. So if I close out of this filter, and now those placements are excluded from the respective campaign. You can see initially it was filtered by both YouTube and display. But if you click on this button, it'll open up the network filters. If you want to look at just your YouTube campaigns, see, I'm seeing more kids videos in here. So I have to add plenty more exclusions. Again, this is all just remarketing. And then you can also filter by just display. One thing you can also do is search for particular placements. So if I go down, just type in a word like games, I can see how many games placements appeared. For the most part, this particular client doesn't have a big budget. And yes, we understand it's still just remarketing. They spent $32 within a couple months and got nothing in return. So I could go over to the main placement checkbox, select everything, and go up and edit it to exclude it from the campaign or ad group. What I could also do, if I close out of this blue bar again, is I could download this entire list. And then you can head on up to Tools and Settings and consider creating a placement exclusion list to potentially save you time in the future if you're going to create more display or more YouTube campaigns. If you wanna go up, create a list, go ahead and name your list, and instead of searching for it, which is a good habit, if you wanna be proactive and adding negative placements, go to enter, and then enter placement URLs line by line or paste in a list. So when you download the Where Ad Showed report, even though it wasn't visible on the previous screen, it's still giving me the placement URLs for both the website and app pages. And then if I add these 92 placements, I'm gonna save it first, but then I need to go back up into the placement exclusion list. There's the blue plus button if you wanna add more exclusions that you see later on, but you scroll down and then you could apply to campaigns. So over here, I just checked everything. It's just pulling over just my Enable display and YouTube campaigns, click done. Now all of my active YouTube and display campaigns are automatically gonna exclude these. So as you keep going, reviewing where your ads are shown, if there's placements that you would never want your display or video ads to be on, add them to this list, and then any future YouTube or display campaign that you create, make sure you add to the placement exclusion list so they never appear on those placements. Now going back up, now on the flip side, what if you're reviewing placements and you're reviewing the stats you can also use this report for the complete opposite scenario. If you're finding certain placements in your YouTube or display campaign that are driving a bunch of conversions or driving a lot of affordable, engaging traffic, if traffic is more of your campaign goal and building awareness, you can take the list of these URLs or placements and come up with a managed placement campaign or ad group. That means you're trying to target just those placements. Now I say trying, because placement targeting in both YouTube and display is not as specific as it used to be, especially if you're laying on a variety of other targeting options like topics, in-market segments, contextual keywords. Google has a right to ignore those placements a lot of times and also show your ads on those other targeting options. However, adding well-performing placements to current campaigns or creating a new campaign is still something worthwhile to test. For our clients running YouTube and display campaigns, we run these checks as often as we're running search term reports to try to find new negative keywords. As I mentioned earlier, as Google's taking more control away, like for the video action campaigns, and we're forced to be on networks that we used to be able to exclude, we have to review the where ads showed report a lot more often than we used to. Find the placements where we don't want to be and consistently exclude them from our YouTube and display campaigns. Make this a recurring task on your list for campaign management so you can do better at getting rid of wasted spend and use that spend to get in front of users who are more likely to engage with your brand and hopefully convert. If you have any questions about what this report can and cannot do, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.